Bats are not one of Minnesota's favorite animals. Truth is, though, bats do a lot of good. Mainly, they eat a lot of bugs. But thousands of our bats are dying from a fungus that started on the East Coast. It has no cure, and that has biologists very worried. I traveled north to Tower, Minnesota, and deep into the Sudan mine to show you firsthand what's killing our bats. If you hate mosquitoes, then you should care that our bats in Minnesota are dying at an alarming rate. Most insects that fly at night, including the dreaded mosquito, are no match for the winged mammals. But it's a fungus known as white nose that's bringing down bats by the thousands. The fungus irritates a bat's ears, nose, and wings, jarring them from hibernation, resulting in a deadly awakening. To find the problem, we traveled north to the Lake Vermilion Sudan Underground Mine State Park near Tower. This long abandoned deep shaft iron ore mine is home to the largest concentration of hibernating bats in Minnesota. Some 10 to 15,000 bats winter here. We met up with James Pointer. He oversees the park's naturalist program, and he is concerned. So what we're seeing is in the wintertime, they're coming out, leaving the mine shaft, and going to find food. Um, here in northern Minnesota during December, January, they're not going to find it because they're, they're all insect eaters. And so what happens in the cold, cold days is they just die from exposure. And this is where they start to surface. This is the last... Uh, the last hurrah right here. Right yeah. here before they hit the air. Huh? And we actually have a number of ravens and um, other birds that will come and swoop down and get them as they're coming out yeah, as really? well. Yeah. White Nose began on the East Coast some 10 years ago. It's progressively made its way west, killing hundreds of thousands of bats along the way. For the last couple of years, Minnesota was surrounded by it with cases in Canada, Wisconsin, and Iowa. And then it hit the Sudan mine last year. But it was this year that bat mortality in the mine hit the devastating level, with 70% of the bats in that mine dying. How significant is that, and what does it mean for the overall environment? Well, it's huge in terms of the number of insects that might not get eaten now. You think about all these bats are insect eaters. I think about the mosquitoes and everything that they eat. Yeah, the, the studies say, you know, anywhere from 100 to 1,000 insects a night that each bat will eat. I wanted to see white nose syndrome and its effect on the bats for myself. It means descending into the bowels of the Sudan mine the same way Minnesota miners did more than 100 years ago. So we've just stepped into the cage and we're going down at about 10 miles an hour deep into the mine right now, about 800 feet, which is where most of the hibernating bats, the level at which most of the hibernating bats will be found. Stepping out at level 12, you notice the bats immediately. Many alive, but just as many are dead. Some still clinging to the granite walls. Others have fallen to the floor. The white fuzz of the fungus evident on some. It's clear these bats hibernating in the depths of the Sudan mine were hit hard. I'm standing about a third of the way down in a mine that's some 2,300 feet below the surface. It's a constant 50 degrees down here, a perfect environment for hibernating bats, which is part of the problem. With that great concentration of thousands of bats, the fungus gets passed from bat to bat very easily, which results in that high mortality rate. As you can see here, hibernating bats cling to each other, walk over each other, passing the fungus from bat to bat. Jim Essig manages the park and the mine, and he wanted us to see what will alter our bat population for decades to come. So Jim, what did you start to see this winter that was alarming? Uh, about middle of December, we started seeing bats coming to the surface um, right around that head frame area where we loaded the cage. Um, with the cold temperatures and 20, 30 below, they, they just, yeah, they weren't surviving well. They died of exposure to the cold. Some of these bats will survive white nose syndrome though, either through luck or a natural resistance. Though the numbers are small and dwindling, biologists hope it is enough to eventually repopulate the Sudan mine or wherever bats hang out in Minnesota. Now, scientists are working on some theories that could someday work to kill the white nose fungus. Among them, some University of Minnesota researchers. A team of scientists from the U gathered natural bacteria from the Sudan mine that they theorize could just work to fight the fungus and save our bats.